is always raising the stakes to make you feel like, oh, it just don't work. I'm just going to be destroyed. If you fear God, you need fear nothing else. Submission and obedience. I'm talking about being sanctioned to the level of your assignment. First of all, we need to know what our assignment is. You need to know what God wants you to do. And you need to know that it's Him that wants to do it and He'll use you to do it. The world is filled with bastard ministries. That's right, I said bastard. <laughs> that is a word that's in your Bible. Yes, it is. It means a false father or no father at all. A child that is born without a father is considered to be that. We use it as a slang and as a curse word to curse somebody's uh, roots or lack thereof. But trust me when I tell you it can be at a ministerial level because any ministry that is not properly covered by a fathering spirit of God is a loose cannon. It's a lone ranger and a loose cannon. Mm. You know what a loose cannon, you know how, where that term came from? It's back when the old sailing ships sailed the high seas and they were all wooden. They were not metal boats. And the pirates were known to uh, attack ships. So, so ships started carrying cannons and had them be cannonball, and they weighed several hundred pounds and had wheels and all. And if a cannon in a storm broke its bindings and came loose, it would roll back and forth. It could knock a hole in the side of the ship, sink the ship. So there was always an admonition from the captain not to let there be any loose cannons. And although that is a nautical situation, it applies in many situations in businesses, in churches, in families, <laughs> loose cannons and long rangers that think they're all that in a bag of chips and they can do it and they don't need God and they don't need you either. Those people are dangerous. Those people can get you killed. Amen. Now, you need to be careful who you let speak into your life. Don't just let anybody prophesy over you or speak over you. Amen. Because if it's a word from God, you need to submit to it. But you better be careful who the vessel is. I mean, the devil knows some scripture too. He didn't know enough to beat Jesus up, and he, and he still doesn't. And another thing we need to understand, you always confess upward, never downward and never sideways. You don't confess. I, I know the Bible says confess your faults one to another. I, yeah, I know. Churches get in big messes when they start confessing their faults one to another. That needs to be under proper covering, under proper authority. God knows how to order things. you got to always obey God's chain of command. Jesus made a statement one time that was an out-of-the-box statement. He said, I have not found this kind of faith in all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you know who he was talking to. He was talking to a soldier. A centurion. A man who had asked him to come to his house and heal his servant. <laughs> and on the way there, the man says to Jesus, Sir, don't go any further. I am a man who is in authority and I'm under authority. In other words, I have superior officers over me 
and I have men that I am their superior officer and they're under me. And so I know how it works. So, sir, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. That's humility. That's submission. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Just speak the word on me. And Jesus turned to those people and said, Did you hear that? I've not found this kind of faith in the whole household. This man got home, his servant was completely made whole, and Jesus never set foot in the place. <laughs> Why? Because he understood God's order. There's time to <coughs> submit, there's time to command. <laughs> Amen. Submission and obedience is always the order of God's day for everybody. Callings differ. Giftings differ. What's the most important gift? The one you need at the time. And let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit is the administrator of the gifts. You are the vessel. You are the tree that the fruit's born on. It'll operate through you. But the administrator of it is the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, well, I have the gift of thus and so on. Nobody has a gift. You don't own a gift. It may be that you've, you've been used in a gift over and over again, and it seems like you have that gift. It's not your gift. It's his gift. And maybe you've learned how to yield in that area, submit and, 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 and be used there. Maybe, maybe. that's good. But you better be open to anything that the Holy Spirit wants or needs to do. I've never been a prayer warrior in my life. I've always prayed. But I've never been a... But today, I'm a prayer warrior. Not because I chose to be, but because I hear myself praying. I feel impressed to pray, and I hear myself praying things I don't want to to pray for. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. He's doing that through me. I don't know. I, don't, I, I didn't ask for it. I was surprised when I heard myself. But I guarantee you, if God does that to me and I pray for somebody, something's going to happen. I guarantee you. Because, and not me. Not me. I'm just a human vessel to release what God wants to do. That's, a, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So what's the most important gift? If you're sick, the most important gift is healing. If you're, if you're uh, 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 oppressed by the devil, the most important gift is casting out devils. If you need information, you need instruction, it might be the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge. See, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is knowledge is what you know, but wisdom is what you do with what you know. And you need them both. They need to work together. Go back and look again, the prophet said. And the man just kept going back without complaint, without second guessing, without, you know, you, you ever told your child to do something and they give you that look? <laughs> they get a spanking for giving me that look. <laughs> yeah, don't you look at me like that. Don't you speak to me in that tone of voice. <laughs> Armies move on orders. It's nurseries that get suggestions. God's not raising nurseries. 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. What is the mighty hand of God? I think in the earth, the mighty hand of God is the fivefold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The mighty hand of God. Why? Because that's how God has chosen to do it. That happened when Jesus resurrected from the dead. He led 
captivity captive and gave gifts to men. And that's the fivefold ministry. I think the mighty hand of God is the fivefold ministry. Apostles, the thumb, the anchor of the hand. Prophets, those who point the way. Evangelists, that middle finger that reaches to the lost. Pastors that espouse you to God and to his family. And the pinky, the balance, the teacher. And pastor and teacher are usually the same thing. They work together. I don't know how you can be a pastor without doing some teaching. Because you have to feed the sheep and you don't want to feed them the same old thing over and over and over. you got to be fresh. And that is a part of the giftings and the callings of God. A real tragedy is a, an evangelist trying to pastor or a pastor trying to evangelize. It might work for a while, but it, it's not going to work on the long term because it's, it's a different anointing. It's a different calling. Uh, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. This is at the beginning when the church first caught on fire after Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. And all that believed were together. Together. That word together there is not just in one place at the same time. We're together here in this Bible study. But we're not just together in one place. We're joined together in the Spirit as a co-family. And God uses different ones in here in different ways at different times to do different things that meets the needs of the body. Uh, all that believe were together. Now let me let me give you let me give you a scripture in conjunction with that. Hebrews chapter ten verse twenty five. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now that word together is there in both scriptures. And all that believe were together. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Now here's what I want to say to you. This togetherness in the book of Acts was a joining together of God. See, if I join an organization, I can unjoin it. But if God joins me to it, my options are gone. Because I didn't join it. He joined me to it. Does that make sense to you? That's the reason the Bible says, in the body of Christ, every joint supplies. Because the joint is a connection that there is there for a purpose. I mean, you don't have a knee growing out your ear. <laughs> this body is in order and in design, in design of God. And, 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 and Paul does a whole teaching on body life and, and, and the, the, you know, the comely parts, the uncomely parts, and this and that and the other and so on. But the body of Christ works that way. And we are joined together. And what God joins together... We may have thought that we joined it, but you didn't. God just put it in your heart to go there, and before you know it, you you one of us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a joining that you do not unjoin from in the sense of just, I don't like this, so I'm just quitting that, you know. Uh-uh. No. Go back seven times. You know, just do what you're supposed to do. So here's the thing. At Christmas time, as a father, I, I would, my kids would get toys and stuff under that tree, and oh, the joy and the joy and the joy. And then for the rest of Christmas Day, I was assembling those bicycles <laughs> and, and tricycles and, you know, assembled together. That means you're not supposed to have leftover parts. I always did. But you're not supposed to have leftover parts, and you're supposed to, it's supposed to, all the wheels are supposed to be in the white, right place and everything. Properly assembled. 
Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some. That's not just going to church. That's being properly related. And that's what they were in the book of Acts. They were properly related to each other by the Holy Spirit. And that made them function with efficiency. And the church today is a wounded body of Christ because we are not sufficient and we are inefficient because we don't know how to submit, surrender, yield, and obey. Everybody just wants to do their own thing. Am I making sense to you? But if there's ever been a time when we need to get our act together, it's today. Because the devil is trying to tear up everything. He's attacking your children. He's attacking your, your finances. He's attacking your government. He is attacking your future. He is attacking the church. He is attacking old people and young. He's attacking genders. He's attacking everything. Everything that can be affected, he is affecting it. The church needs to stand strong in these kinds of times. Who knoweth of what thou art called to the kingdom of such a time as this? That wasn't just a message to Esther. That's a message to you. This is our time. If we stand back and wonder what's going on, then we have failed. We need to find out what God is saying and what God is doing and what we must do to be a part and party to it. If nothing, if nothing, if nothing else, we need to learn how to pray. Anointing starts at the head and flows down. It never starts at the feet and goes up. Anointing don't start on the elbow. Anointing does not start on the knee or the shoulder. Anointing starts on headship. It's designed that way. It works that way. It flows down and the body that is properly connected all gets anointed when the anointing starts at the head. You need to pray for me that I'll be anointed. Amen. Amen. Whether you like it or not, the Lord has put me here as the head of this ministry. Uh, it's not my ministry. <laughs> and I'm certainly not worthy to do this. I know that I'm not. I know. I know. God doesn't. He, he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Okay. If God joins you, the options are gone. First Corinthians ten two. They were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That is a strange thing. Baptism is a New Testament doctrine. Most people think baptism. Did I get the wrong scripture? No, no, no. First no. yep. Corinthians two ten or ten two. They were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. What does that mean? That means that they were under the headship of Moses, who was being guided and directed by God. They submitted to that and they all went through the same path through the water and through the cloud and it was a baptism of, of, of a type, a type of baptism not only to, to God but to the headship that God had put in place in the, in the nation. Does that make sense to you? When the 300 that was 
down from 32,000 that worked with Gideon, stood in the darkness around the rim of the, of the, the valley, broke their earthen pitchers, blew their trumpets, and shouted, The sword of the Lord! They also said, And of Gideon. Because God had used Gideon, brought him out from behind the barn, and said, I want you to lead the people. He wasn't a leader of people. He was a hiding farmer. And he said, Lord, who am I? I'm the least in my family, and my family's the least in the nation. I, who, who are you? But that's who God calls. <laughs> Do you know how many people hate Donald Trump? <coughs> hey, man. Because, I mean, he's, he, he comes across as arrogant. He comes across as, as uh, 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 narcissistic. And he comes across as, as, as uh, belligerent sometimes. Those are the kind of people God uses. The yeah. ones that you wouldn't choose. Exactly. <laughs> God chose Cyrus in the, in the Old Testament to save the nation. He wasn't Jewish. He wasn't even, he wasn't Christian. He was a heathen. But God touched his heart and made him do things that saved the nation. I don't even know why I said that. We're in the last days, and in Malachi chapter 4, we're told, In the last days I will send you the spirit of Elijah, who will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. We're in the last days, and that is a move of God today, to save our children, and to reconnect generations, spiritually. And also, I believe, in the natural. It is a move of God. Who knows what part you shall play in this? Who knows what your assignment may turn out to be as you go along? Assignments can change. Uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Turn over there with me quickly. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. I've tried to slow down and say some things that need to be heard. Philippians uh, chapter, what did I say, 2? Two? Two. 2. And start with verse 5. Five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became, uh oh, there's that word, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that if the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every, uh, of things in heaven, things in earth, and of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what we understand here, that Jesus became obedient before his, he expected his disciples to be obedient. You see that? He became obedient. Um, in Hebrews chapter uh, 5, let's turn over there, Hebrews 5. Look at, uh, start with verse 8, Hebrews 5. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Order of Mel now Melchizedek was not Aaron, the high 
high priest. Two different men. Melchizedek was before Aaron. He was in the days of Abraham. Melchizedek was a man who was a king of a place called Salem. A king. Salem means peace. So he was the king of peace. That city that he was king over later became Jerusalem. He came to Abraham's tent one day. And he served Abraham bread and wine. I don't care how you slice it, that's communion. And Abraham paid him tithe of all. So who was lesser and who was greater? Abraham, the father of the faith, paid tithe to this man who ministered communion. Now, you've heard, probably heard me say this. I believe that this man had come across the great flood. I believe he was the son of Noah. His name was Shem. And I believe that he was indeed the king of Salem. But I believe he represented Christ. And Abraham submitted to him. Mm -hmm. He knew things that Abraham did not know. He, he came from the other side of the flood. He knew things. Okay. In Romans chapter 5, verse 19. For by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made sinners. 1 Samuel 5.22 To obey is better than sacrifice. There are people that do not want to be obedient to God and they'll do something sacrificial to try to make up for it, not being obedient. Didn't work for Saul, won't work for us either. Now then, I want to say one last word to you before I let you go today. I've, I've, I may have stirred up as many questions as I have answers today, but I think I've answered a few questions and maybe made some things clear for you that we are sanctioned to the level of our assignment. The last thing I want to say to you is that I put an acronym at the bottom of your outline. K-Y-P-D. Is that on your outline? Yeah. Mm -hmm. KYPD. Are you ready? This is a profound statement. <laughs> Keep your powder dry. <laughs> One more time. Keep your powder dry. That was the war cry to the Patriots. In the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Keep your powder dry. Because uh, wet powder will not send the bullet. <laughs> May I say to you, we are in a war. Whether you feel like you are or not. Whether you know that you are or not. You are in a war. It is God and evil. Yes. And because you are of God, <laughs> you are a target. Yes, sir. Why didn't they just use a Colt revolver? Huh? Why didn't they just use a Colt revolver in the Revolutionary War? The technology wasn't there yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing him. <laughs> to quote, uh, who's the guy that uh, Tom Hanks played in the in the uh, Forrest Gump? Forrest Gump. To quote Forrest Gump, <laughs> "Stupid <laughs> is as stupid does." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your patience today. I've tried to uh, slow down and be succinct and not uh, excited because I wanted to sink some things into your spirit because the order of God is what will bring us through the war. An army.
army that is out of order is destined for the boneyard. The army that Ezekiel saw was not in order. They were disjointed, discombumerated, scattered. And it took resurrection power to put them back together again. And I want to tell you, the church is a little bit like that bone yard. We need resurrection power in the church to raise us up back to the power of the book of Acts to be properly connected together. If we, ha if we do what they did, we must have what they had. They had a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I pray for our cove and for our ch churches across this nation and for our nation. We need a fresh pouring out of the Spirit of God. God called this nation forth and he anointed it. And it is still anointed. It doesn't look very anointed and it certainly doesn't act very annoying. But God has not changed his mind about you. Mm -hmm. You are still his people. And he wants to put us back together again. And you are a part of that process. Hold the line. Keep your powder dry. Submit. Obey. Trust. And do not be moved by evil reports. There are a dime a dozen. Lies sound so factual. But a lie is a lie. Exactly. And you need to discern what's truth and what's a lie. Thank you, Father, for these precious people. Thank you, Lord, that week after week they come here to encounter truth and to be impacted by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for their patience, for their desire, for their identity in the body of Christ. Lord, this is the salt of the earth. This is the light that is set on the hill. Help us, Lord, to follow you closely, not afar off, Closely. And help us, Lord, to be sensitive and obedient and yielded and submitted always. Father, we thank you. We praise you. As we go, anoint us. Anoint our steps, our stops, our thoughts, our actions. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God All bless right. you as you worship the Lord in giving. Offering basket is here. There's a lot of room in.